Hi, I'm Dale and I'm a member of the product team at Clickhouse and I'd like to show you our integration with the popular open source visualization tool, Apache Superset. Superset uses the concept of dashboards to deliver a rich BI experience for a wide range of visualization types, including tree maps and box plots. With a focus on SQL based data stores, users are expected to be comfortable writing SQL queries, but can also build visualizations straight from tables. In this video, we'll build a wide range of visualizations, starting simple and increasing complexity. So if you're a data analyst or a BI user, this is the tool and video for you. To show off any ClickHouse integration, we first need a ClickHouse cluster. For this, I'm going to use ClickHouse Cloud. ClickHouse Cloud offers a serverless solution for ClickHouse, where storage and compute are separated through the use of object stores such as S3. This allows for a service to hold an unlimited amount of data and automatically scale up and down with respect to compute in response to your workload. You can see here the landing page for ClickHouse Cloud, where we have a list of services. Each of these can be thought of as a serverless ClickHouse Cloud cluster. For this demo, I'm going to use a service I've pre-created, this one aptly named Superset Demo. To obtain the connection details, I need for superset, I simply click here and copy the credentials, the password and the host string. Okay, so now we have our connection details for ClickHouse, we can go about connecting to superset. Now, I'm not gonna go into setting up superset, but you can get some instructions in the link below this video, which uses Docker Compose. When you first load superset, you'll be presented with a logon screen. Here you can use the default credentials, admin, admin. This will direct us to the main landing page. Out of the box, I'm offered some default visualizations and dashboards using inbuilt data sets. But at this point, we aren't connected to ClickHouse. To connect, we need to go to settings, database connections, and then click add database. From supported databases, I can search for ClickHouse Connect. Now this is the official Python driver for ClickHouse, which powers the actual connection itself. I can now enter my host details, the port, which is 8443, a database name, we use default, then our username. Now for ClickHouse Cloud, the default user is just called default and then the password that we recorded earlier. We next need to enable SSL and click connect. Great, we're done. Now we've connected Superset to ClickHouse, we can move on with building some visualizations. Right, now we've connected our ClickHouse service to Superset, we need to expose our tables so that we can build visualizations on top of them. In Superset, this is achieved through a concept of data sets. The first data set I will add is for a hacking news table. This is a popular website for developing news, with most rows either representing a story or comment. These have a title, text, and a time. Now let's put a line chart showing how ClickHouse is being mentioned over time. To do this, I need to add a data set. So I click data sets, add data set. I'll then be prompted to select a database. For ClickHouse, this is actually our service, ClickHouse Connect. For the schema, this actually for ClickHouse, again, is slightly different. It's the database. Now my service can have many databases inside it, but I know that my hacking news table is in the default database. I then select my hacking news table. And once it's loaded, I'll be presented with the schema. You can see my time, text, and title columns. Now let's create the data set and a chart at the same time. Note that a data set can be reused across many charts. Now, Superset has a wide selection of visualizations, but in this case, I'm just interested in the time series line chart. So let's select this and then click create new chart. You can see that my time column has been automatically populated, but I need to change the bucketing interval to month. So I select time grain, month. For my metric, I just want to count the number of rows over time. So I can just use count wildcard. And now I need to filter to only stories and comments. To do this, I type the type column and enter the values comment and story. At this point, 
I would have all of the stories and comments over time. But I also just want to filter to those containing the word ClickHouse. To do this, I need a custom filter. So I use a little bit of custom SQL here. Here, I'm just restricting to those rows where the title and the text contain the word ClickHouse. Note this is case insensitive due to the I like operator. Okay, we're done. Let's click Create Chart. Okay, the first thing is clearly ClickHouse is increasing in popularity over time. As a final change, let's change the chart type to an area chart. I just scroll to the top, select Time Series Area Chart, and then update the chart. Great, we're done. Okay, final step, we'll save the chart with a name. In this case, ClickHouse Stories Over Time. For my next visualization, I'm going to use a Forex data set. Forex trading is the trading of currencies from different countries against each other. For example, the US dollar against the Euro. A currency pair consists of a bid and quote currency described in the form base stroke quote, e.g. Euro stroke US dollar. Some currency pairs are traded more than others. Let's see if we can visualize this with one of Superset's more interesting visuals, the tree map. So first of all, we need to add the data set. So we go to data sets, our data set, select our ClickHouse service, again, our default database, but this time we select the 4S table. You can see the currency here, we have our base and our quote columns, as well as a bid and ask price. Let's click create data set and create chart. Now, to find the right visual, let's search for tree map, select tree map and create a new chart. You can see the time column has been automatically populated but in this case, we also want to restrict rows to those from the last year. To do this, we click on time range, select last, and then last year and apply. For our dimensions for the X and Y axes, we want to use the base and the quote. So we add these, first base, and then quote. Now, to determine the size of each square within the tree map, we need a metric. The larger the computed value, the larger the square for the axis pair and the currency pair. So we're going to use one minus the average of the ask minus the bid. What I'm actually computing here is one minus the average of the spread. This is the difference between the bid and the ask and is effectively the margin for the broker. It's how institutions make money. The most commonly traded pairs, however, will have the highest liquidity and the lowest spread. We thus subtract this from one, so pairs with the lowest spread have the largest square. Great, you can see from this that the euro and the US dollar, the euro, the US dollar, sorry, and the Canadian franc, and the US dollar and the Swiss franc are the most traded pairs. I'm now going to show a slightly different workflow as I'm going to reuse my previous Forex dataset. Combining chart types is often essential to show correlations and patterns in data. I'll now show how to achieve this in Superset. We will explore a classical visualization mixing line and bar charts to show the value of the Great British Pound US dollar and US dollar euro currency pairs against their spread. Since I have my data set loaded, I don't need to use the same process as before, and I can simply select charts. From here, I can select add chart, followed by my data set 4x, go to eCharts, and select my chart type of interest, the mixed time series. Once selected, I can click create new chart. We can see the time column has again been automatically populated, but we also want to restrict our visualization to the range of the data. We do this using the time range selector, filtering to August 2016 to August 2022. For our metric, we're going to use the argmax function to find the highest ask price per date time bucket. We're going to assume this represents the price of the currency. Like our previous visual, we want to plot this metric per currency pair, so specified base and quote as our dimensions. Next, we want to filter to two currency pairs of interest. We do this with a simple piece of custom SQL, and we're ready to move on to our second query. For our second query, we need a different metric. Here we provide the average of the ask minus the average of the bid, which is effectively the average of the spread. 
We use the same dimensions, base and quote. And also we need to apply the same filter as before, restricting to the currency pairs of interest. Okay, finally, we're going to smooth our second query with a rolling function using the mean, setting the period to 10 and also the minimum periods to 10. Whilst this renders, it's not ideal. The second query clearly needs its own axes due to the scale. To do this, we select customize, move down to query B and move this data to a secondary axis. For good measure, let's also change it to an area chart. And we're done. In my next visualization, I'm going to use one of my favorites in Superset, the box plot. But more importantly, I'm going to show a key superset feature, the ability to specify any query as a data set. This is particularly powerful as it allows a chart to be built for more than just a table. We can use any query and the power of ClickHouse's aggregation functions to shape and transform our data to the pattern we need for a specific chart. To do this, we need to use superset SQL Lab. Click SQL, SQL Lab. We then need to select our ClickHouse service, our database, and our table. For my box plot, I want to plot precipitation ranges for EU countries over the last 50 years. I'm going to use this NOAA table. This contains weather data from the last 100 years. It's about a billion rows. Now, in its current form, this table isn't appropriate for our blocks plot, but using a simple query, we can get the values we need. You don't need to worry about the specifics of this query, other than we compute the rainfall for each, for each EU country for every year since 1970. Once the query is run, we can click Save, Save Dataset, and provide an appropriate name. Right, let's now change this chart type to the box plot. So we click on View All Charts, search for box, and select box plot. Next, we need to make sure that we group by year, so we change our time grain to year. We also have to change our distribution column to virtual table underscore year. This is an idiosyncrasy and something that we expect to remove in later versions. We then need to group by country and specify a metric. In this case, I'll simply use the average precipitation and the max per year. Save and update our chart. Once rendered, we can see that Albania and Georgia appear to have very wide ranging amounts of rainfall. For my final visualization, I'd like to show some of the geo features of Superset. I'm going to use the same capability as my previous example, where I save a query as a data set. So let's get started. Again, we select SQL, SQL Lab. We select our ClickHouse service the default database, and this time, the UK price paid table. This contains rows for all UK house sales over the last 20 years. Every row is effectively a house sale with an address and a price. Let's see if we can show areas which have increased most in the last 20 years. For this, I need a reasonably complex query. Don't worry too much about the specifics, but we join the address with a list of regional codes for the UK. If you are interested in more details, see the blog post in the description. Importantly though, the result of the query gives us the percentage change per region. Okay, let's save the result with an appropriate name and click Save and Explore. This takes us through to the chart builder. To change the chart type, we click View All Charts, scroll up, click Map, and then Country Map. Now we need to change the country to the right country, obviously UK, select the appropriate code field at the name code, and finally an appropriate metric. We can just use the max of the percentage change. We're also going to modify the style very slightly, changing the color from yellow to red. And now we'll render the chart. Great. Okay. We're going to actually save this to a dashboard. And when we navigate to the dashboard, 
We can go full screen, get a little bit more detail and see which areas have had the highest price change over the last 20 years, i.e. those in red. Thanks for watching this video and hopefully you found this useful for getting started with ClickHouse and SuperSet. Before I go, I'd like just to provide a few useful links. Firstly, you can reproduce all of the examples in this video using our public environment play.clickhouse.com and by downloading SuperSet with the link provided. Note the Explorer username and port 443 in the connection details shown. Alternatively, if you want to experiment with your own data sets or these examples in a little bit more detail, you can start a trial with ClickHouse Cloud today and receive $300 in free credits, more than enough for every example in this video. Finally, the blog linked has more details on all of the examples shown in this video and can be found in the description. That's all from me. Thanks again for watching.